My name is Sean Elliott and I'm the director of photography of the day and I by default get to be the person who gets up here first and, and talks but hopefully I'm not the one who's going to do all the talking. Uh, I wanted to give you just a quick rundown of uh, the genesis of this. If you didn't read the article in the paper, um, listen to the podcast that's being published. Um, Susan called me was that January, Susan, right? Well, you had that uh, yeah. year in review in the paper. All right. It was just astonishing. Called me up, said, you guys take such great pictures, and so many of them are of the things that our, light, our museum is about. What would you think of doing a show? And, and I, I said, funny you asked, because I had been thinking about the possibility of pulling together some of the work of, of this talented staff and putting in a gallery and bringing people in so that they could connect not just with the pictures they see in the paper, but with the people who take the pictures. And very quickly it all came together. We decided on the space we were going to use, the, the size of the pictures, and it was just a question of picking out some photos and putting them in some frames and sending out the invitations. And I really appreciate you all being here. It's uh, gratifying for myself. I'm sure everyone here will tell you as well it's gratifying. We put our stuff in the newspaper every day and sometimes we get feedback and sometimes we don't and it's nice to know there are people out there who are appreciating the work we do and want to come here and talk to us about it which is really great I'm going to give you a quick introduction uh, to my left Tim Martin staff photographer at the day Tim's been with us for uh, nice to be here. Uh, about 18 years right Tim 18 years yeah, yeah. Tim Cook, uh, whose job title now is multimedia photojournalist and works uh, primarily in video, but for the uh, decade or so prior to that job title change, has been a staff photographer as well. Uh, and Dana Jensen, who has been at the day as long as Tim, 18 years, uh, is also a staff photographer. The work in this room is represented by these photographers. Um, we could have gone much deeper into the archives. I could have pulled fantastic maritime photographs out back as far as you can imagine. Um, Bob Patterson, who's hiding in the back somewhere, I think, was a chief photographer when I started at the day. And I know, for instance, off the top of my head, of some fantastic photographs he's taken as well that would fit in this show. We realistically could have filled multitudes of galleries. Uh, the photographers here, in addition to the nitty-gritty news and other work that we do for the newspaper, uh, see these scenes and record them because we know that this is part of the fabric of existence in this region. Uh, when, when they asked me to write up something about the show, I said, life in southeastern Connecticut is inextricably tied to the sea. I don't think that anybody questions that. Uh, and so we decided that this was what we would do, working with Susan and the Custom House Museum. And what you see are 20 of, by some estimation, some of the best work we do. And I'm glad you're all here to enjoy it. And what we're here to do now is hopefully answer questions from all of you about what you've seen. Um, pick a specific picture and ask the story behind it. Uh, more generally about what we do. Uh, if you don't have a specific question to someone, I may direct your question to them, so I'm not the one answering all the questions. Uh, I've been at this long enough, as everybody in here has, that any of us can answer pretty much any question you ask on a general subject, and probably could answer any of the questions about any of the pictures, whether we took them or not. So, Tell us a little about your equipment. <clears throat> equipment. Uh, well, the camera I brought with me today is a, is a Nikon D4 which is a one generation out of date Nikon digital SLR camera. Um, I have, we at the day all shoot Nikon cameras uh, going back probably at least 30 years or longer. The day has been a, what we call a Nikon shop. We've always bought Nikons for our photographers. Uh, the day went digital back in 2001 for everybody. We bought our first digital camera actually in 1998, uh, but from 1998 until 2001 there was basically just one camera or two cameras and those were shared around to whoever needed an assignment that demanded the specific capabilities of digital. And, and the megapixels, what do you have there? Uh, you know off the top of your head, D4 is a 16 megapixel? Yeah, 16 megapixel. Um, 
It's what's called a full frame digital, which means that the sensor that records the images is about the same size as the frame of a, a film camera from the 35 millimeter era. So. <clears throat> You're welcome. Any other questions? Um, so you have some great shots of ships and submarines, and do you guys have a schedule that's given to you, or you just happen to be driving by at the right time? <laughs> it's a little of both. <laughs> we usually have maybe two or three assignments, but <clears throat> a lot of those are just feature images, and that's where you just go and you might just go camp out at uh, Avery Point or something and wait for the ferry to come at the right light or something like that. Uh, there's a lot of these shots too from Opsail. Um, when there's going to be a lot right. of those boats and stuff. Yeah, the, the, tall sh the parade of sail obviously very much a schedule. It's going to start at a set time and the boats are going to come in a certain order. Um, you want to talk about just chasing a sub and catching a sub in transit? Um, yeah, I mean it, it's a lot of it is just being prepared, um, having, you know, we all carry a battery of, of equipment, so we have multiple lenses from wide angle to telephotos, and then we also have some pool like telescopes primarily um, that we, you know, sometimes will have with us. And, you know, the cruise ship coming in obviously is a situation where, you know, that was something we knew in advance. But a lot of times it is literally if you've got time between assignments, you know, and you have, um, you have the right. You have the equipment ready. You know, a lot of times with submarines, we can hear them coming and going. You know, the Navy will call out that they're going to be on the river, so that gives us an opportunity to sometimes, if we're local to the area, to think of, well, you know, get it. We're going by the lighthouse or something a little different. I mean, I know Sean's done some stuff where he's. You kind of you're you're figuring out where can you position yourself for the best shot. So it's not as much about what landmark can we put it by, but if it's sunset. You want to be on the Groton side of the river so that the sun's setting behind it. Sean has a, had a great shot of a Virginia class headed out, you know, lit up bright orange. But if he'd been on the New London side of the river, he would have gotten, you know, light on one direction. So you, you kind of plan ahead in your head knowing what's going on at the time to, to, you know, give yourself the best optimal chance for the best shot. Can you want to vote for some of these photos? Uh, yeah, I think it's safe to say in several of the instances, any number of us were on boats. Um, Dana was probably on a boat for the, the crew photo. Yes. Um, I know I was on a boat for this parade of sail photo, the, the parade of sail photo with the Eagle and the, war, and the Navy ship. Tim was on a, a chase boat as well. So a lot of the times, yeah, it's so ideal. who owns the chase boats? Like, is that part of the paper, or do you have oh, to have yeah, a plan, I, or do you have to I've, I, I have lobbied since the first day I was here that the day should own a, a nice small boat. You know, a little Boston whaler, keep it docked down at City Pier, so anytime we need to get out on the water, we could go, and never quite made it through the budget process. <laughs> <laughs> um, for, the, for the parade of sail events, usually the, the organizers provide a press boat. Uh, we tag along. Sometimes we just get lucky and somebody takes us out on a boat. Um, the, uh, oh, in back. In back. Uh, are, are you using unmanned aircraft, also known as drones, or do you have to go up in planes? <laughs> we have to go up in planes when we do aerials. We do not current. The day does not currently operate a, an unmanned aerial vehicle. Um, with, with with current current regulations to the FAA, we have we'd have to actually get a license to fly them professionally, and so we're in the process of, of looking into that and, and studying possibly for the tests coming down the road. But it's a situation where right now we a don't have you know a, you know a exactly unmanned aircraft, but at the same time we would also have to get licenses. Um, that's just FAA regulation right now. So I need. I saw one that looked like it was taken from an aircraft. That uh, that, yeah, probably the, sub, the outbound submarine over there. That was taken from an aircraft. I was actually up uh, doing aerial photography for something else. Um, I don't remember which story it was. And just happened to, on a pass on the flight, I noticed there was an outbound sub and spent a couple extra minutes in the air kind of chasing it up down the river. So. Little Sweetie had a question. Yes. yes. That picture's really pretty. <laughs> that one? <laughs> Very nice. Thank you. <laughs> a lot of it, too, is just when you're finding, I mean, yes, there are times where we are up in the air, but, um, you know, I know I've taken photos from the Gold Star Bridge. You know, you're always trying to find, you know, top of a parking garage. You know, you're always, 
you're always kind of in search of different locations to view the same scene from so you can get a different perspective on it. It's kind of the art of the trade is to try and show your local community through you know, a slightly different perspective than the normal, normal, the average person sees when they're walking down the street. So, trying to shine a different light on, on, on everybody's daily life. They do frown upon shooting from the bridge. They do. So, you know, usually okay. within two minutes you'll have a state cop yeah. up there. <laughs> Calling the state police in advance on that's usually a help. <laughs> so you guys have all worked for the day for a decade or more. Mm -hmm. um, did you grow up in this area as well, or did you move here for the job? In New England. Yeah, kind of well, over. I was going to say, Dana. I grew up out west. I grew up in Arizona and moved here up from Colorado, actually. So. Yeah. But you've done a good job getting to know the area. Like you said, you're always searching for the right angle, understanding where the sun is, and wanting to, to promote it in its own <coughs> visual um, look for people to enjoy. I that's, mean, that's a very good... It's one thing about this job. We're on the road so much, we get to know the area very well, very quickly. It's actually a great accent. Everybody who, who knows us, you know, likes the fact that, you know, if we're driving, we know all the back roads, we know how to get around traffic. <laughs> we know the owner of three lighthouses in this area. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. Have you done some work from the lighthouses? Uh, well, Dana, I, Dana, did, Dana, yeah, Dana. I did, I did the, the panorama yeah, that's been in the back corner there. Dana yeah. certainly took that one. Oh, yeah. You want to talk about that one, Dana? Well, sure. Um, that, uh, somebody asked me about it earlier how that was taken. Um, there's a device, which I can't remember the name of it now, that um, I put it out on a tripod and with the, uh, that was with a 14 millimeter lens, and you take a series of six photos right. and then there's a, there was a soft, software program that connects them all together and you end up with that as a result. Have you got down to Race Rock? Uh, I've, never, I've never been on to Race Rock I've been out to it in a boat a number of times. I've been to the top of Harbor Light. I've been into Ledge Light. Um, I think that's, and I've been up to the top of uh, Avery Point Light. Uh, I've never been in the Morgan Point Lighthouse. Uh, that's privately owned. <laughs> it, it, it is a little problematic. Um, so. Anyone else? I can. Um, what, what's your geographic area? Like, is there a point where you don't go further? Yes and no. <laughs> uh, I mean, the day's sort of official coverage area is roughly from the Connecticut River to the Pawkatuck River. Uh, earlier, and, and then about north to Norwich or thereabouts now. Um, 20 years ago, our coverage area extended into Westerly. Uh, it has extended through Old Saybrook at a time, and it used to extend as far north as Plainfield. Um, and we have, in times, gone wherever is necessary. Uh, we, certainly, we certainly cover sports at the University of Connecticut. Uh, I've been to the northwest corner on stories. Um, back in better financial times for the paper, uh, we've traveled rather extensively. Uh, Tim has been to the Persian Gulf on board a Navy submarine, uh, as well as to Iraq with uh, Navy sailors serving there. Uh, I've been to Cuba and Israel on assignments for the paper, uh, but southeastern Connecticut, New London County is our primary area. And we'll stretch that a little bit if, there, if there's a really great photo calling. You know, non-professionals um, are increasingly noticing that, that the phone cameras do a very good job. From a professional point of view, um, in terms of the, the um, Criteria. Uh, what do you think about those? I, I think they, the, indeed, uh, one of the great stories that I, I, I like to tell is that this, this device, the chip in here, is much higher resolution than any digital camera I owned for the first decade I shot digital. Um, so, from a, from a standpoint of, of what the camera is capable of recording, the, the cell phones have come a long way. Uh, they have a lot of limitations, and I, I think there is a, a qualitative difference between what a professional photographer who has trained and studied and thinks about photography all the time will do as compared to someone who is not. Uh, but yeah, the, the advances in the technology is very impressive. 
I think. Um, Tim, you want to talk about the lightning photo? Sure. I, I don't know if um, I'm assuming everybody's had a chance to see it. It's it's a fairly popular photograph. Well, this was this was um, last summer. Um, I was headed home. I believe I was actually going out on vacation even. So not only was I heading home for the night, I was actually out off work, but I was actually leaving on vacation as well. And I I'm attracted to weather. I just you know. I'm not always a big fan of it, you know, working in a blizzard or a hurricane, not so much a fan of that, but in safe conditions, uh, I like really enjoy, um, you know, photographing weather in its different forms, fog, you know, sunrise, sunset, moonset, moonrise, and in this case, I was, I don't know if it was underway as I was leaving the office, but you know, I could see, it was one of those hot summery nights and there was a lot of flickering in the sky, and as I was driving south on Montauk, I could see this thunderstorm, you know, big glowing clouds, chains coming out of the clouds, whatever else. And so it's just, it's one of those moments where you just know, I've got a tripod, I've got my camera, I've got lenses. Before I get home, I'm going to stop somewhere. And so I was headed south on Pequot and, and just pulled over. And, and I noticed there was just tons of people lining Pequot Avenue. And I was like, it's kind of interesting. But, you know, so I picked up, you know, grabbed gear, set up my camera, set up the exposure, and I probably clicked off the better part of 30 frames. It's probably a five to 10 second exposure. Um, just trying to make sure you get, you know, you're always just, because you can't time lightning. You just gotta, it's, it's kind of a fluke thing when you get it. And in particular, a bolt like this one, which is an arc lightning that came out of the storm. The thing that I always like about this photograph is that this thunderstorm, I'm seeing it in New London, it was up over Warwick, Rhode Island. So that's how far away that storm was. And the catch was that everybody who was lining Pequot Avenue was actually there because Ocean Beach was about to have a fireworks display. And so, <laughs> so I'm sitting there thinking, you know, I'm looking this way, everybody else is looking the other way. I'm like, what, you know, what's the big deal? And then all of a sudden I hear the fireworks going off. And, but at that point I was like, it was ready. You know, I knew I had, with the digital camera, you can always peek, make sure you got a shot. And when I saw that bolt go off, I knew the shutter was open at the time. Checked the back, knew I had the shot. So I was like, okay, now it's like 8, 30, 9 o'clock. I want to get it back to the paper so we can get it in. So I quickly rushed home. Or actually, no, I transmitted from the road. I just threw it on my computer, transmitted the photo back to the office, and went home. So I <laughs> actually posted that one up on Facebook as kind of a, folks, I'm going on vacation, so I'll see you in a week. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? Okay, so I got two, two things. First of all, if you didn't see it, there's a, a nice little flyer here. Uh, just about this show, but what it includes on the back is, is a link, and this is a, a place where the day posts galleries of photos, and there will be a gallery that will include these photos, and I think probably what I'll do is go ahead and pull some of the photos that didn't make it into this tight edit for the show and add some more, so you can go to the day and, and look those up. Uh, they won't be up until after the weekend, because I'm going to take the weekend off, but <laughs> next week you can go, you can look, uh, and you'll see some more of the great photos these folks have taken. Uh, and then the other thing is, and some people know and some people don't, any of you who RSVP'd to come here on the Facebook event that was created for it, were automatically entered in a drawing. I'm going to draw a name, and as soon as I pull a name out of the hat of someone who's actually here, you'll win one of these photos. So, uh, day employees are excluded, I'm sorry to say. <laughs> Actually, so uh, I like the choice of hat. <laughs> Susan, Susan picked out a, a genuine custom service hat from go. the museum collection. Uh, I'm hoping it's new enough that I'm not damaging it by shaking it a little bit. Susan, I would appreciate if you would pull out a name. And we have Sandra Hawkshurst. Sandra, are you here? <laughs> okay. Next. Yeah. Well, we're going to go until someone's here. <laughs> the whole point is they RSVP, you know, saying they'd be here. So, Richard Brown. Yeah. Hey, there we are. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So, pick one. Susan will label it as sold, and when the show comes down in July, you can come get it and go home and put it on your wall. Okay. All right? Thank you. Thank you for coming. Yeah. So, that is. That's the show. <laughs> um, feel free to pigeonhole us in afterwards. And